now, they are they put people to chase because no one, having encountered, let's say a a, a paper nest or or whatever hornets or be, hornets are actually wasps, but bees. When you encounter bees, you don't just go go away. You don't do that. You turn into a complete idiot as you go running and screaming and flailing all over. Ah! Let me get them off me! Ah! Little bitty animals like that. Little bitty animals. And God said, I chased you. The Amorites, who were giants, chased you as bees do and destroyed you in Mount Seir, even under Horma. Um, Psalm 118, verse 12, listen to this. They compassed me about like bees. You know he's talking about? The wicked. They compassed me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. See, and by the way, thorns sting. See how it all works? Remember what uh, Jesus said to Paul when he met him on the road to Damascus? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, the stings. I, everybody's got their own idea. That's a, you know, kind of a wild statement, but I think Paul right then, and, and you look at the tone of Paul's ministry after that, I think right then Paul was beginning to understand that as a Jew, he was trying to work against the sting of death by law-keeping. And it was futile. It wasn't going to work. And so thorns, bees, hornets, um, scorpions, um, nails, <laughs> okay, they sting and they pierce, and then death. I think all of these are pictures of what happens in Revelation chapter 9. Um, now, and I, I've got so much here to share with you, I'm just going to kind of run through. Let me go to the next slide here on my PowerPoint presentation here with my newly developed technology that I'm still learning. Uh, the Merovingian kings used, and the, the Merovingian kings used the bee as one of its primary symbols. Why the bee? Um, be, I think because of its relationship to, uh, number one, masonry, but number two, if you remember the idea of, um, of uh, the Merovingians and where they came from, you know, what, you know the story, and I've kind of told this before, but the idea was that their, their, their king, Merove of France, um, was the son of a human woman and a leviathan, a sea monster or a sea creature. You, you get this? Even if that story is a myth, we know what that myth is based upon. Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God, these, these beasts and the daughters of men coming together. And so here's the idea that King Merove, whether literally or he is just perpetuating the, the story that had been told. Somehow, someway, he has this God-like God -like right to reign um, as the Merovingian bloodline because he has literally the, the bloodline of the gods in his veins. And so that's why you have the symbol of the bee showing up under the, the Merovingian kings. You'll see it in other... Um, other shields, you know, think of that idea of a shield. There's a shield right there. That's what we're looking at. Um, the shield sort of being the forerunner of things that are coming down the road. Now, one of the most notable things about bees, of course, is where they live. And that actually was the symbol that was on the Masonic Lodge. It had the bees, but it had the hive. And I want you to, I want you to notice now that the symbolism of the hive look at the look at the shape of it and and isn't and just drop the conspiracies for a minute isn't god amazing to develop these creatures who have a brain that is smaller 
than a pimple on my nose, and yet they repeatedly design the most complex uniform structures that can be seen in nature. It absolutely blows me away for some idiot to say, now this, this took them billions of years to develop this technology. No, it didn't. God put it in them. God put the blueprints of how to build their hives in their genetic structure. They do this by nature. It was already there with the first bee. But understand the, the whole hive concept. That here you have this, this dwelling here of these hexagons. The number six plays into this very heavily. So you have this dwelling place of hexagons. And all of the bees are all, they're very communal. Not all of them, but a lot of bees are very communal, which means that they go to the community worship center. Okay? They are commutarianist. They believe that it's all for one and one for all. They believe that the hive doesn't belong to just one bee. It belongs to all of the bees together. And they are extremely communal. They all are brethren of the same bloodline. It's like masonry. We believe in the brotherhood of all mankind, really. That only works if you all have the same father. But think about the hive and who's in charge of the hive. Uh, Monica from Texas sent me uh, this idea today and I said, you know what, Monica, I'm going to use that. She said, it's like the Borg, if you know what that is. Anybody here watch Star Trek? We are the Borg. Resistance is futile. And when you, this is from Star Trek. I am Barack Obama of Borg. Resistance is futile. If you remember about the Borg, they were this, I kid you not, they were this species of aliens that were half biological and half robotic and computerized. And what they did was the, the Borg were into assimilation. The Borg traveled around in this cube. You know how many sides a cube has? Six. Okay? So it's a hive is what it is. And, and literally that's how the idea was developed amongst those who were writing the Star Trek script was the Borg are this hive species. And they go around assimilating civilizations. They find a planet. If there are humanoids on the planet, they invade the planet. They turn everybody on the planet into Borg. They assimilate them. And now, no matter who you are or who you were as a species, you are now Borg. You're part of the collective of the Borg. And, you know, the whole thing of Star Trek, they're trying to take over the Enterprise, and they actually uh, get Captain Picard, and I'm chasing rabbits here with the Star Trek thing. But anyway, do you remember the, the movie, uh, what, what was it, uh, Star Trek um, uh, first, um, first something, anyway. I, I'm surprised I don't remember this. First Contact. You find out that there is actually an entity that controls the Borg, that controls the Hive. It's a woman. She's the queen of the hive. Now I want you to get this concept. Bees are controlled and serve the queen. You know who the queen is? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's the symbolism of it. So you have... These things that sting, they have the sting of death. They have four wings. They fly, so they are representative of spiritual beings. They are all part of a collective, and they seek to make the collective. And they're controlled by the queen. So you kind of get an understanding now why Masons use this particular symbol of the, the hive or the collective uh, of bees and what they represent. Now, 
Uh, let's see here. Let me see what I got queued up next here. Oh, I got to show you this. I got to show you this. Hang on here. Let me go back. Now, remember this. This. Let me show you the, the thing here. This just came in today. I'm not kidding. You guys are on the ball. Here is the hive of the community of the sting of death. This is what it looks like. I'm going to show you. Actually, let me do it this way. Let me show you this. A guy just sent this to me today. Pastor Mike, I'm sure you've seen this, and I, really I haven't yet until he showed it to me. The C3 conference is coming back. C3. C is the third letter of the alphabet. Three. The 33 conference. Here's their logo. I'm not kidding you. That's the logo of the new C3 conference. The six, sons of God, daughters of men, Genesis 6, above and below. And look at all those hexagons in the background. They're telling you. And it's the mystery conference. It is the mystery conference. I'm telling you, this is mystery, got mystery Babylon all over it. And they're showing you in a mystery, in this language of symbolism, that their conference is all about getting everybody into the hive by transformation because Mystery Babylon is running the show here. So it's called the Mystery Conference. And what, look, at their, look at their sub-slogan. It's not about who says it. It's what you do with it. That is heresy. That is heresy. And I'll tell you why. I've been trying to teach you the, the, the things that I'm picking up from the Bible. In the um, Another Jesus, Another Spirit, and Another Gospel series that I did, especially the, the other gospel, um, what I showed you is, is that any gospel, any gospel that includes works or a performance of some kind as the necessary requirement to satisfy God as part of your salvation is a different gospel, and it's anathema. It's cursed. I've had people, King James believers, try to convince me that God had one gospel for us Gentiles, which was salvation by grace through faith alone, period. But God had a gospel for Israel that was faith plus works. That's insane. It's insane on every level in the scriptures. Because God, the new covenant that you and I are the participants of, the doctrine of, of salvation by grace through faith, God actually promised it to Israel in Jeremiah 31. I will give you a new covenant, not like unto the covenant that I made with your fathers at the base of the mountain. But it's a brand new covenant. God promised the new covenant to Israel long before he ever gave it to us. If anybody gets saved by grace through faith, it's Israel in the last days. And here's what I'm telling you. As you start hearing the preaching coming out of the pulpits, what you're hearing is a new gospel. It is a gospel of works, and they are removing belief out of the contract. Perry Noble does it. In fact, he brags about what he does and what his churches are doing. And if you dare criticize him for cursing and playing hell's bells in church and having uh, PG-13 services where the sixth graders and below have to go downstairs because he's going to talk dirty in front of everybody, if you dare criticize him, then he'll just say, well, while you sit there in your Bible studies reading your Bibles, what have you done this week for God? You see... That's the very reason why Paul told...